Greetings. I am Lieutenant Governor Trigenzo Roach. A very important initiative of our office is the street addressing initiative, which has been ongoing. And you have seen proof of the work as we have journeyed to the towns of Christiansted and Frederickstead, Charlotte Amalia, and Coos Bay. A very important aspect of our street addressing initiative is collaboration. And we have been pleased to have the collaboration of various agencies, including the United States Postal Service, our, our Water and Power Authority, and our Virgin Islands Fire and Emergency Medical Services. As a part of the public relations work, discussing the initiative and showing its importance to the community, we have engaged in a series of uh, conversations with our collaborators. We had intended to begin airing uh, these components in January, but our director of Virgin Islands Fire and Emergency Medical Services, uh, Daryl A. Mousy George uh, Sr., who uh, recently passed, was a very, very strong supporter of the initiative and really understood uh, the importance and significance of it uh, to improving the quality of life for all of our residents and improving emergency access, which we know is critical, particularly in times of local disaster. We wanted to honor his memory by showing this episode uh, in which he discusses his role and his vision of the importance of this project. We wanted to air it uh, because he understood the project and he has been, had been a strong supporter of the project. And instead of starting it in January, we're going to begin with this episode uh, dedicated to the memory of Director George, reflecting on the wonderful public work that he did in this territory, the work that he did on behalf of all of our residents, and particularly his dedication and devotion to the children of the territory in so many aspects of his life. And so we offer this uh, in memory of him. Uh, because of his great work and because we were grateful to have him present with us and to have his support of this project. Please join us uh, for the other episodes which will follow. Thank you so very much. Welcome to another episode of the SAI Talk Series. SAI represents the Street Addressing Initiative, which serves as a critical infrastructure project for the territory. The Office of Lieutenant Governor leads the charge of the SAI, which will create a nationally standardized addressing grid for the Virgin Islands that provides for a clear, logical, and navigable system of street addresses. My name is Chris George, Project Manager, and this show serves as a platform to speak with key stakeholders about the impact of the SAI, to share valuable information and updates with you, our viewers, so that you can get involved in this process that will impact each and every one of us. So continue to stay tuned for all things SAI-related as we launch this territory-wide phase. Tonight, my guest is Director of the Virgin Islands Fire and Emergency Medical Services, the Honorable Daryl George. Welcome to the show, Director. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Director, let's start with providing a brief overview of the Virgin Islands Fire and Emergency Medical Services. There are many functions, services, and divisions, but can we summarize those for our viewers? Yes, thank you for inviting me. Virgin Islands Fire and Emergency Services is components of four units. We now have the suppression unit, the prevention unit, the administrative unit, and the newly medical emergency unit. Mm -hmm. um, this has been something a long time coming. Uh, some 18 years been trying to get this integration okay. done, mm -hmm. and we finally got it done. Just like the street initiative, it's been a long time. Yes. We've been going at this for about seven, <laughs> but 12 years. Yes, sir. And I am proud to say today that we're getting closer to the objective that we started back then. Thank you. Um, so with that merger um, with, with... Integration. Integration, sorry, <laughs> my, my bad. Um, the integration. So everything before that, it was just fire? Yes. Fire, hazmat, and prevention. Okay, got you, got you. So in regards to fire and emergency services, I know it, some people may think it's common sense, but there's a lot involved in Definitely. getting people the help that they need. Definitely. How does street addressing affect your process? Very much. Just utilizing what we do today. Mm -hmm. I use an example the other night. We had an incident in the northern area, 
a hand we were trying to locate a general area. Oh. If we had this street mapping initiative mm -hmm. in play, mm -hmm. the location of this home would have been much easier for us. Mm -hmm. um, we would have to go up the hill, take a left, take mm -hmm. another left, down a hill, up another hill. Wow. So it's, it's very cumbersome. Mm -hmm. And utilizing this kind of technology and, and signage, it will help us get to scenes much quicker. As I said in the past, um, I think a lot of people do not understand the, the benefit of having this initiative done. Mm -hmm. um, and when we started back in the day, I know we had a lot of pushback. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I hope now that we're doing the public education, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will join us and, and support this initiative. So with that situation that you did first described, was the customer on the phone or how did, how did you get the addressing so, information? So, you know, our calls go to 911. Mm -hmm. The dispatchers takes the call mm -hmm. and the, you as a citizen has to give them the directions to where the location mm -hmm. is. Now, if it was a working fire, we'd have been seeing the smoke and the flames. But because it wasn't a working fire, we had to locate and identify the, the, first, um, the resident. So that took a little time. Mm -hmm. Then the other problem we have is the general areas where people are just parking willy-nilly mm -hmm. and, and don't have respect for the big fire apparatuses that comes into neighborhoods. So having this initiative put in place, it also helps us to do nice surveillance, meaning go out in the night, look at areas, put tags on people's car, and, oh, okay. and warn them about you know parking in these locations. That's something else we want to implement with this street initiative. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's one of the aspects I did not know that was under your purview as far as monitoring hazards within the roadways. It's very much a, a big part, and we have partnership with VIPD mm -hmm. in the past, but we have dropped the ball on it, mm -hmm. and we have to continue this. If this street initiative goes into play, we will have to make this a priority because we, we, we're now having so much cars on the street mm -hmm. and people are building homes without parking lots. So everybody's parking on the main roads of, wow. and thoroughfares of all mm -hmm. throughout the islands. Yeah, that, that seems like a bit of an issue. So as far as the process, so the, the, the resident would call an emergency. Yes. They would get Vitima, yes. the 911 system And they there. dispatch the fire department. And dispatch, so they, would have, give, they would have to give a Current lengthy location. address, yes. Yes. a lengthy type of description, then that would be passed on to you guys, and we hope nothing gets lost, lost in, the in the middle. And this is why this is so important. Yes. When you get a call, go by Ms. Jones' house, take mm -hmm. a left, go up to Mr. Asker's house, mm -hmm. take a right. Those, those days need to be gone. When we have the laptops in a truck, the GPS picks up the location, and by the time we start seeing the signs, we know we're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Now we have to go by Ms. Jones' house, to go by Mr. Asker's house. That's the that's yes. arcade system. That's yes, yes. the Flintstone days. Mm -hmm. You know, with this initiative, I have a lot of hope this will work for the emergency services. Yes, and, and just for the public's awareness, Director George has been one of the biggest advocates for this process, for the project in general, since, since its Inception. beginning. Um, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. I remember we did our bridge phase launch yep. at the new command center, Omar Brown. Yep. And we did, uh, when we did Charlotte Mali, Frederick said, Christian said, we did the first launch in Omar Brown. So this is how much uh, Director George has been playing a part in this process. Um, when the addresses are created, is it still going to be the process still through Vitima that E911 will still be? Yes, that has to be the, the where it all, where mm -hmm. The information is channeled to the emergency services. Mm -hmm. um, when we created the, the 911 system, which you were part of mm -hmm. back then, yes, it was to cut out that middleman. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, we would get the call, write down the address, mm -hmm. such and such, and then you, you just dispatch the firefighters. Or you call this station, and they dispatch themselves. Oh, okay. No, that, those days are gone. With 911, we have callback numbers, we have a, um, Recordings, mm -hmm. that's a big factor in this because, oh, okay. yeah, a very big factor because when there's litigation, we could always go back to the tapes and recordings of the, the response to the incident, mm. and that's very important. You know, um, many times people call and make allegations um, about things, and when we go back to the tape, we see maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, but at least we have that evidence, the tangible proof, right, proof that mm. we can you know, sustain a case if something has to come legally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So as far as um, the routing, so the, I guess the drivers themselves interpret the locations or the locations that come from 911. Yes, and most on every shift, the trucks go out and do what we call pre-planning oh, okay. throughout the island. They go in different neighborhoods, they drive around, check hydrants, check addresses, like in the Savan area where we were mapping years ago. Yes, yes. Savan area is one of the most congested mm -hmm. and hard to find areas. There are uh, Nada, SD22, those mm -hmm. areas are hard because there's so much side roads, little nicks and, yeah, yeah. nicks and crannies. So when we, when we do our pre-planning, the guys go out and mark, you know, which hydrant is not working. Mm -hmm. We report it to WAPA. Um, this neighborhood is tight for which truck. Um, and they do a lot of other things that, you know, uh, people in the public would not know. Yes. Um, but it's very important that when this initiative goes into play, that we be able to have correct addresses and landmarks. So it's, I guess it would be pretty important. I mean, it, it has been pretty important for emergency services in general that your drivers have a good idea of yes. the island. Yes. Is there, is there like one driver would understand town, one driver no, would understand, or they will everybody? No, they have to know the whole island wow. because the, each station covers a zone. Mm -hmm. And if we have a major fire in Tutu, you have the border truck has to go to Tutu, mm. the Darate truck has to go to Tutu, and the town trucks have. So you have to be aware of the whole territory, not just your district. Wow. So it, it, it is a must that they have a great understanding yes, very, of the territory. very much so. So, and that leads to the, the, the emphasis that with the street addressing project, you will have access to addresses that you could just type in the address and it exactly. would provide a route. Yes, I, I happened in 2010 when we was working on this project, I had the opportunity to visit Washington mm -hmm. um, on a conference. And one of the things then that when we visited in DC and we saw what their technology, mm -hmm. and you know DC is big, the presidents yes, yes. are, when you see their technology in their trucks, it pinpoints directly where the car came from. Mm -hmm. So the, the GPS gets you to follow straight to that location where that thing was, that car came in and it points right there for you to get to that address quicker. And you know different routes you could go. Mm -hmm. So it's an easier process and an easier way for the 911 dispatchers to be able to dispatch us Got to you. the incident. So it doesn't even, so at that point, it wouldn't even matter really if the driver was familiar exactly. or not. Exactly. This is a big initiative, which I support you, Chris, 100% and the Lieutenant Governor's Office, because I know this will save lives. Mm -hmm. And even now that we have the ambulance, it will also play a dual role with the ambulance services. So, so with the ambulances, that, that is the similar type of yes. routing that's going on? Yes. Are they stationed up at the... They're now stationed three places. Mm. They're going to be um, stationed three places. Right now, they are three locations. We had Omar Brown Fire Station, mm -hmm. Schneider Regional Hospital, and Lima Company in the day. In the day, okay. So all of those places have to have drivers yeah. that know the Where islands. Yes. Wow. See, so that's that's pretty amazing, and we definitely, as a territory, would have to give kudos to the not just the drivers, your staff, all the staff, all the staff, and then as well to the dispatchers. Who, who are taking the calls and interpreting that type of language? I think that people really don't appreciate what 911 does. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm up in the night listening to the radio with the guys going out, and you could hear sometimes the frustration in the wow. 911 dispatcher's voice because you're seeking information from someone mm -hmm. who is now calling for help. Mm -hmm. They're in, in distress. 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 So they, they are panicking, they're, they're angry, they're you know, excited. And they have to sit there and listen to this, mm -hmm. you know, listen to someone calling their mom is dying, mm -hmm. you know, a person is shot. Mm -hmm. You know, they are in a lot of duress. Yes. And, you know, it's very hard <laughs> when you sit down and see what these young ladies and men do mm -hmm. at the 911 call center. People are calling yeah, through and tears and everything. Yeah, and, and it's, it's just a little bit of them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of these days, like I said, when we get all of this together, the Virgin Islands will be proud. A lot of the work we young people did to get the Virgin Islands on top. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely a, a emphasis on how important both the 911's understanding of the territory and your driver's understanding of territory. Yes, definitely. So the street addressing initiative is the project that will alleviate a lot of this process for both parties. 
So um, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're here with Director George out of VI Fire Service and Emergency Medical Services, and we'll be right back with the SAI Talk Series. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the SAI Talk Series. We're here with Director George, Director of the Virgin Islands Fire and Emergency Medical Services. We were just going over a, a, a very large and important point about this project, that this is the most important critical infrastructure project in modern Virgin Islands history. This project will alleviate a lot of issues, not just with parcels, understanding the roadways, people getting around, but the most important medical emergency or emergency emergency Any services kind of emergency. in general. In general. Yes. yes. Because people need, when they want help, they need help now. You Definitely. Know? So I just want to jump back in to um, some points of interest for uh, Director George as far as what do you see going forward for the linkage between Psy Project and your, your division? I, I, like I said, I, I think this is an awesome project. I've been involved for a long time, and it, it, it bothers me that it hasn't been implemented yes. as yet. So I really encourage the public to really join forces with the LT's office mm -hmm. and really make this something successful. It took me 16 years to get the integration done, mm -hmm. and it's a success. Yes, commendable. It's, it's really surprised me as a person, and I think having this street initiative done it would be another icing on the cake. And me. yes, definitely <laughs> for, your, for your cake, because uh, the integration of of the two sides now under one, yes, one roof yes. allows you to better manage information and the data. So it's not street addressing data going to different places. Exactly. It's going exactly. to one place. We just need to educate our community. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest factors in the territory is when misinformation gets out there. I remember when we started, yes. a lot of people was against the street there was initiative a, there was a lot because of pushback. we just we just came through a trial and error with the postal service mm -hmm. when they created those new box numbers mm -hmm. and they didn't understand, you know, and I think that these kind of programs by educating mm -hmm. our public of the greatness of this what this this initiative is going to do, I think the the people will buy into it. Yes. Um, uh, it's a very heavy public side to the project. Yes. Um, public involvement uh, via naming of the streets in their exactly. areas, which all goes back to the data that comes back to you, because the, all the streets have to be named Definitely. in order for the addresses to be implemented for and you And I think use. that one thing that we as managers and public officials need to do is when we're educating the people, you have a say. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to say, if I want this street, Vestagada, stay at Vestagada. That's your call. Yes. The people in that neighborhood will make that, mm -hmm. that call, you know, but just to say we're against, I, I don't believe in that. I mm -hmm. think that we are bigger people than that, and yes. sometimes change is inevitable. And mm -hmm. this is an opportunity for the Virgin Islands to be on top of things and make, be the star of the Caribbean. Yeah, it, turn, it, turn, it definitely turns the corner for us as the Virgin Islands and within the region, like you said, we will be the first islands to have a fully functional address grid. And this kind of technology. Yeah, and there's no nowhere else in the Caribbean that Definitely. can say that. You know what Definitely. I mean? Definitely. So with the advancements of your CAD RMS system integrated with the Lieutenant Governor's Office street addressing data, it will be a huge jump for... Um, and that CAD system is another big milestone for mm -hmm. us. Can you talk I, about I, that? Yes, the CAD system is a system that we have to put reports in, to track mm -hmm. numbers, do data, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot of, a lot, a lot of um, um, work went into this because we, we still have paper. Yes. And having this piece of a tool, it makes the fire emergency services much better. Mm -hmm. We now can tackle a lot of stuff um, that we had on paper. We do more data entry, mm -hmm. you know, I could pull numbers quicker, you know, um, track billing, track gas, track mm. everything wow. with the system. So um, I, I'm, I'm excited to have it put online. Um, I'm very I'm happy that we got it to this point. And the next step now is the getting the street addresses, street get in, in there, get put in it in, plug it in. Yes. Um, as far as the, uh, the, the dispatchers, I remember actually going down there and um, the, uh, Director Jashin uh, invited me down there to watch how the process happens. And those ladies, like you said, it's amazing what they do. It's a green screen. There's no mapping. Yep. At this, well, there was no mapping at that there point. There was no mapping. No. So it, they were just taking 
um, information from people's calls and just interpreting it right on the spot. When we did the training for the 911 dispatches, I think it's still out there. There's a, a map that I took a, a, a marker mm -hmm. and color coded all of this, the zones mm. for the dispatchers in both islands, St. Thomas, St. Mm -hmm. John, and St. Croix. So that's what they use for the zones. Wow. It's right there on the wall when you walk into Vaitima. Mm -hmm. And it is anti antiquated, but yeah. it was something to start the process when 911 was created. You guys. Yeah, and, and it was very helpful for them. And, and this street initiative, the same thing, once we get it up and running, I believe people are going to be excited about it. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. And, and, it, and kudos to you and your staff for being able to do that without street address. And that's, right. that's mind blowing for me. Yes. Um, so what we're gonna do now is give you an opportunity to go over some of the, the, the stuff you got going on, not a part of street addressing, but just in the development of your, your Well, department. you know, fire service is very busy. Yes, I can um, imagine. You know, we, we had a lot of things on the drawing board. Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time in the last three years to get this integration done. Um, a lot of fight back and forth mm -hmm. with the employees from EMS. But I'm grateful for today that, you know, they have joined forces and come aboard and I, I, I am also surprised that they have come on and we don't have the kind of backlash I thought we would have. Okay. I think it has been a smooth transition. Mm -hmm. We found a lot of things that wasn't being done for them and we're correcting those things. Um, just recently, the team got together and we saw some information back in March about some funding that may be available. I'm happy to, mm -hmm. I'm glad to announce that we mm -hmm. just got $1.8 million for seven brand new ambulances. Wow. We wrote some um, some letters to our uh, delegate, the governor, mm. and our lobbyists, and we were happy to get this money, so I'm grateful for that. Last year was a stellar year for us. We applied for five grants, mm -hmm. the TAP grant, the MAP grant, the AFG grant, and out of those grants, we got 11 pieces of equipment mm -hmm. and tools and equipment. Mm -hmm. So more tools and more equipment. So we now have about 11 new pieces of equipment in the fleet, and by next year, we should have some more ambulance in wow. the fleet. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what the team has done. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some couple of projects going on also. Um, the Tappy Seals Fire Station on St. Croix, we have gotten um, yes. money to that's rebuild. That's down by Wapa? No, that's um, in Grove Place. OK, OK. Um, that's going to be demolished and mm -hmm. rebuilt. State wow, of the Art okay. Fire Station. Mm -hmm. We just got approval for Cotton Valley um, Fire Station to be demo and rebuilt. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to get. Fortuna, that's my headache right now, Fortuna, Fortuna okay. um, up and going, um, get FEMA to agree to build it back new mm -hmm. and state of the art, also Cruise Bay. Um, we have little repairs and re um, refurbishing to do at some other fire station, Lima Company, Darate, mm -hmm. um, Fredericksted, Christiansted, uh, Richmond Station, all of those are getting retrofits, hardening. Um, there's a lot, a lot of work. Um, for the first time, St. John, is going to get two brand new mini pumpers okay. for the mm -hmm. small roads up mm -hmm. there. Never done before. Uh, we just procured um, some money for a brand new fire boat. Okay, yes, that's in the boat. building process. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of work we've been doing. The helicopter on the no, no, no helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> we're pushing it right now. <laughs> helicopters. We really try to do it infrastructure and a response. Mm -hmm. We got some quick response vehicle from DOI, the Department of Interior. That was part of the 11 new vehicles that we had. Mm -hmm. Some rescue trucks, some rescue tools, some homachos. One of the things that happened after the hurricane, FEMA wrote a report that we're not self-sustaining. And what we did was join forces with FEMA. Okay. And we collaborated with them for a grant where we now retrofitted all our equipment to deal with any task force mm -hmm. that FEMA sends to the territory. So the same equipment that the task force is bringing when they come after a storm, mm -hmm. we have it in the territory. Oh, so it's ready to go? And yeah, we're ready there. to go and team up with them. Okay, so they'll be things. used to using the same equipment right. once they get here, right. they'll see the same stuff. Right, wow. so we, we did that. The only setback I will say in this little, over, over the time has been our communication. Mm -hmm. We have gotten a lot of pushback about the towers. Okay. Um, for us to get proper radio communication, we have to put up. Is that the Annie Alley towers? Um, no, they have to be between 100 to 75 foot towers. Oh, wow. 
and that's a big thing because mm. people are saying the radiation yes, in the yes. neighborhoods and stuff, and we have gotten a big pushback yeah, against I, that. I, I think I remember helping out BIT yeah. doing some of the sourcing for right. the one down in Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Yes, yes. It still is not up. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and um, that's that's our setback right now mm. with communication due to the fact that we don't have any towers. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at other amenities, how to bring up the standards for the communication mm -hmm. aspect of it. There's new technology out there, so we're looking with BIT and Vitima and all the emergency services working together. I think we'll get it done sometime mm -hmm. this year or next year. Um, and it, it's great that you have such a great working relationship with Vitima um, and the GIS division of Lieutenant Governor to make sure all the data and connecting points are there. We try to collaborate with all the agencies, all the departments, because we're one emergency service. Yes. You know, when one bleeds, all bleeds. Mm -hmm. You know, police, fire, EMS, DPNR, all of us work together. And as the director of fire service, I try to keep that cohesive unity among the emergency services. Uh, we have the rescue, the volunteer rescue groups that we keep close-knit with, you know, but all in all, I think we as emergency services have to stand together and make sure we push to get this project moving and finish. Well, thank you always. It's a thanks to have your support, Director. Definitely. Um, you want to give any, uh, as we close out, any more information? I just want to thank my staff, mm -hmm. thank all my employees for the great job they're doing. To my staff, I'd like to say thank you, thank you, love you. Um, to all the people that support the fire service, you know, the family, friends, thank you. It's been a stellar year for us. <laughs> yes. We have some, a bunch of new employees, mm -hmm. and you know, we're just making the family tighter and much better. And every Stronger time, together. Every time I pass Omar Brown, I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, that's a nice building and situation. So um, we want to close out right now. So thank you, Director George, for joining us on this episode of the SAI Talk Series. As one of our key stakeholders, we are grateful for the ongoing support of the Virgin Islands Fire and Emergency Medical Services. And we will thank you, our viewers, for tuning in and staying informed. The Street Addressing Initiative will drastically improve navigation and location capabilities for emergency services, first responders, postal services, utilities, and several key agencies and departments. For additional information or questions regarding the Street Address Initiative or how you can become involved in the process, please call 340-693-6191 or send an email to sai at lgo.vi.gov. Once again, my name is Chris George, Project Manager, and we'll see you next time.